Have you ever wondered? The philosophy of life lies in making the right decisions to enjoy a happy and healthy living. Similarly, in the realm of structural engineering, prioritizing safety and economy is paramount for successful projects. This design philosophy is rooted in satisfying the dual limit states of strength and serviceability. In our structural analysis course, a similar intricate engineering problem was on the horizon, requiring our skills to propose the best suitable solution. In this project, we tackled a complex engineering problem where we had to opt for the optimum design option for a basement roof slab measuring 50 feet by 30 feet. Our choices were between a full width span statically indeterminate continuous beam, 30 feet, and two half width span statically determinate beams, 15 feet each. As structural engineers, we analyzed and designed both beams, ensuring safety and economy. Given that the slab was a one-way slab, which by definition is a slab, that spans in one direction and is supported on two opposite sides. We utilized the appropriate formula to shift the load to the beam. We then proceeded to analyze the determinate beam utilizing the equation of equilibriums. The results for maximum shear force, maximum moment are illustrated accordingly. Subsequently, the indeterminate beam was analyzed employing the slope deflection method. The results for maximum shear force, maximum moment are presented as follows. Beams are used to carry loads in a whole range of different structures, and it's important for engineers to be able to predict how much a beam will deflect when loads are applied to it. Construction codes typically define what the maximum allowable deflection is. The reference texts often include tables, which list the deflection equations for a set of typical load and support configurations. The maximum allowable deflections and actual deflections produced in both beams are also shown. These manual calculations were cross-validated with analyses performed using ETABS, revealing a high degree of correlation. The design process introduced an additional challenge. Here's how the bending stresses are distributed over an I-beam cross-section. Specifically, when top fibers above the neutral axis are in compression, they become susceptible to buckling. As far as our design scenario is concerned, connection details for the beams were not specified. Nevertheless, wooden beams were positioned above the steel beams along their entire length. These wooden beams were connected to the concrete slab via bolts or similar fasteners. Consequently, LTB was effectively mitigated in our beam design. Upon completing the analysis, the beams were designed adhering to the LRFD approach, ensuring satisfaction of both strength and serviceability limit states. Therefore, the final steel sections for the beams in both options come out to be. In conclusion, the comparison of design specifications is as illustrated. And we may recommend that the indeterminate beam is the best suitable design option for the basement roof slab. If you have any queries, leave a mail. Thank you.